Hello, it's Gazelleg for Grinderschool.com here today with the next part of the $2 uh, double rush rebuy on full tilt. Um, sitting here with a pretty decent stack. Let's go straight into it. And if you haven't watched the previous three parts, definitely recommend watching them, especially the first part where I talk about my strategy in these kind of tournaments. Uh, I find that it's much better to, uh, you know, when you pick up a marginal spot, marginal hand, Let's say we had um, Ace-8 offsuit here. Um, we feel that the three players in the blinds are uh, tight enough that we can steal. I'd actually prefer to just fold and move on to the to the next hand. Um, I'm looking for pocket pairs, suited connectors, Broadway hands, um, hands that are going to be pretty easy to play and be able to uh, turn a profit um, long term. Okay. Uh, King Queen, I decide to to open. And we get flattered by the guy in this in the small blind. Um, he has a short stack. So, I mean, these are the sorts of spots where you know you have top pair, good kicker. Really, just can't be worried about anything. So we want to try to give him as much uh, room to to shove all in here as we possibly can. Um, I'm gonna take. I don't know why the HUD stats are on there. Um, if you'd watched the previous parts, I didn't have the hard stats working uh, during the tournament, so I don't know why they suddenly come on then. Um, one second, let me just sort that out. Hopefully we're good to go. Um, as I said, so um, he has just oversized pot. Um, happy just to... Uh, I'm probably just going to bet small, give him some room to, to shove him with his draws. Okay, uh, it's probably a little bit too big. I'll probably go a little bit smaller, um, but he does fold. Uh, and that seems pretty bad from his stack size to be calling the small blind. I understand the big blind, maybe he's got the odds to, to call. Um, but even so, with his stack size, it's uh, dangerous. So here, this could be a really good spot to steal. Um, not great with this, the small blind being so short, but um, just the, co the concept of late position steals, one in a regular tournament I would look to, to open, uh, especially if I knew more about the players in the blinds. Um, but here, I'm instantly going to fold. When you can, just move uh, move on to the next hand. It makes much more sense to do that. And here, just going to let it go. Uh, King 10. King 10 suited, I'd probably open. So... We have to play in, in the blinds, um, facing a raise in a 3-bet, it's going to get out of the way. So there is, is going to be a lot of folding, um, but uh, you know, as I said, it's, it's good. That's good, a good thing because it means you can fold your way to better hands. We're getting lots of uh, junky hands. I wonder if I played this King-5 suited. No. I mean, that's pretty, pretty wide. Here I'm just going to be shoving. And he calls with 7-6 offsuit, and we take that one down. Um, not too much to talk about here. Uh, he has less than 10 big blinds. We have a Broadway hand. Um, I don't think the hand is good enough to induce with, so I don't want to be raised calling, so I just decided to shove. And if he has a better hand with us or he manages to win, then so be it. Um, but shoving's far better here. Uh, I mean, we've got two ways to win. He could fold and we pick up a 675 chip pot, or he calls and we win at showdown. Okay, here's a hand we might play. Okay, eight, and we get called, and we get a shove. Okay, um, so we get flattered by a guy with a short stack. I can, I mean, sometimes this guy might fold the guy in the middle, uh, but against two players, eight isn't going to do particularly well. Uh, you know, if we're against ace king and well, one pair and one ace king, we're not doing very well at all. Uh, the pair is likely to be higher than eight. Um, so this is, I mean, we're getting pretty good odds, we need 38% against this player's range uh, for shoving here. Do we think that he's ever doing this with 7s and 6s? Uh, possibly. Without stats, it's hard to tell, and without reads, it's, it's hard to tell. Uh, we've raised from fairly early position, though. I don't think he's going to be getting too out of line. I think if there, was, there wasn't the player in the middle, I think I would uh, lean towards a call. Um, but I think this is going to go three ways too often, uh, so I just fold, and the guy does fold as well. 
Um, I mean, given the fact that it's still a long way to go in this tournament, and we are probably getting the right odds to call here, I think it's absolutely fine. Um, but as I've said in previous videos, calling shoves um, is the number one cause of variance. So we need to be really, really careful, careful with that. And you know, he's obviously he's. I think he's going to be shoving aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, and nines. Um, which obviously a lot of pairs better than ours. Um, how many pairs is he going to be shoving that are worse than ours? Seven, sixes, fives, maybe. I can't see him going too much wider. He's got to expect one of us to call, especially the fact that this um, the flat caller in between has uh, has a pretty short stack. So I, I think this guy is probably shoving like a pretty tight range. And even if we go as you know as wide as ace jack and ace queen. Um, I just don't think we need to take a flip. We've done pretty well to to get here, and we there are much pro you know more profitable spots, ones where we just can be guaranteed of picking up chips. You know, pot after pot. We don't think we need to to be risking it here. Um, I think uh, if you if you've ever if you've read my article, uh, it's called the top down method. This is a great example of of when to use it. Um, so you can say it's it's an article that talks about which. Uh, which hands you would call with in a particular spot, or which hands you would you would uh, play in a particular spot. So in this spot, we could start with the top. Obviously, we're going to be calling with aces, kings, queens, jacks, and tens. I think um, so. Then nines and eights is kind of that sort of sort of messy area. The area when we go, well, I'm not entirely sure. I'm not quite sure. And I think that's absolutely fine to then go. Okay, well, I'm going to fold it in this spot. Uh, in terms of ace x hands, then I think we get an ace king. Um, ace jack, I don't think we would. I don't think he's doing this with ace ten. Um, so ace queen again is that border. So I reckon like nines and maybe tens. No, nines and ace queen is probably that border area where we could call or we couldn't call, and then anything less than that is going to be um, a fold. So definitely check out that article um, if you it's uh, available. If you just type into to Google the top down method and gazelle it should uh, it should come up. Uh, I think it's available on part time poker uh, if you want to search on there as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely check that out and see if it um, helps you with uh, spots like this when you unsure as to what, what uh, when to call because you'll get that moment. You'll get that the, um, that pocket pair that you just don't feel too comfortable with. Um, and at that point, you just know that anything below that uh, is going to be a fold. So I do fold in this particular spot. A7, so this could be a steal possibly against three three players. Um, I don't like it too much, but uh, in the Zoom tournament, I'm just going to be folding it um, straight off the bat. So Sully Broadway hands from early position. I like this. He decides to shove. So again, we're getting 38%. Um, we'll do a quick bit of analysis now i think i'll get icmizer and we'll uh, we'll have a look at this uh, this particular spot and we'll discuss it so one second all right so here's a spot uh, loading to icmizer then and this is us raising uh, from under the gun and we get shoved on by the big blind um i'm not going to worry too much about his range for now because i'm going to show you a function within icmizer uh, that's uh, that's going to help you in this particular spot. So, against a, against an eight percent shoving range, the so pocket sixes plus ace jack off suit plus and ace ten suited plus, suggesting we can only call with ace queen off, ace jack suited, king queen suited, and sevens plus. All right, um, but it's it's pretty difficult to to know exactly what his what his range is. Um, so, if we click on this hand EV chart, we can see at which point. Um, it's profitable for us to call. So we can see that if he's shoving fives, ace nine suited, and ace ten off suit, then uh, it's a fold for us. Uh, but then just a little bit wider, pocket fours, ace eight suited, ace ten off suit, king queen suited, we can see that this is just about a profitable call. Okay, um, but let's have a look, quick look at this the situation. We've raised from early position, and we've got shoved on by the guy in the big blind. Now, generally speaking, his range is going to be pretty tight. Um, you can see wide shoves from the blinds versus late position steals. Um, but my under the gun, there's no reason for me to think that this guy knows that I'm going to be raising light under the gun uh, so that he can shove particularly wide. 
So I reckon his range is probably going to be somewhere in this little triangle, green triangle here, uh, at which point it means that this uh, it's not going to be a profitable call with uh, with King 10 suited. So it's a pretty cool function that we can see. Um, if you ever think that players are going to be shoving uh, against your late position steals, you can see exactly you know how profitable uh, calling would be in this particular spot. But it brings me on to um, or brings me back to the point about calling is that we we don't know exactly we're never going to really know exactly what our opponent's range is uh, admittedly he's only got 11 big blinds so maybe his shoving range is, is is a little bit wider the reason why i chose to fold in this particular spot is because i think i think he's probably shoving a pretty tight range given that i'm raising from early position and uh, don't forget that he it's a zoom tournament so he can just fold his he can just keep folding uh, if he wants to, to in order to in, until he gets a, a really strong hand so there's no you know real um incentive for him um if he got a garbage hand or a, you know a mar more marginal hand in a big blind he'd probably just insta fold so that points me towards him having a having a stronger range also we have um we have 40 big blinds and we found it pretty easy pretty comfortable to pick up chips up until now so do we want to risk, I mean, it's, it's not a massive call, is, is it going to have a massive effect on our chances moving forward in the tournament? Probably not. Uh, we're still early, early stage, well, early-ish stages, there's still a long way to go in this tournament. So if it was, you know, a, a more, a closer spot, if I thought, thought this guy was showing a, a much wider range, um, I would then look to see where we are in the tournament. And if there's like several hundred players left, then I'd make the call because, um, it uh, you know we need as many chips as possible to make it make a deep run, um, but I just thought his range was was pretty tight, and I was gonna uh, be able to find better spots to be profitable. Uh, and I only risked two big blinds here. I don't think I needed to risk uh, anything more. Okay, so hopefully I explained that well enough. Um, let me know if you want me to go through any of that again. Uh, but definitely have a look at ICMizer and. The, way it will tell you how wide the player needs to be shoving for you to make a profitable call uh, but then factor in other decisions like how you know how far you are away from anything anything meaningful in terms of in terms of money and, and goals um, and also probably how your stack size compares to the other players left in the tournament so if you've got a pretty decent healthy stack towards the late stages of the tournament why would you want to jeopardize that by uh, yeah you might have enough equity to make the call um, like we saw, it was 38% equity that we needed. Uh, but that's saying, okay, well, 62% of the time I'm going to lose here. Um, and generally, I mean, it's not going to be... We, the thing is with uh, expected value is that we, we don't have an opportunity to play the hand out a million times and realise our equity. So in that sense, it's much better to just take the more profitable spots of like stealing from late position, um, value betting, things like that, rather than risking uh, uh, in that particular in that particular spot. Okay, so here I decide to isolate this player. I'm not too in love with this play, uh, given the fact that the player has under 20 big blinds. He could be limp re-raising, uh, but he does just fold. We take that one down. Here, I think this is a good spot um, to defend. I'm getting really, really good odds. You can see 20, again, 20%, um, just over 4 to 1. We have a hand that plays pretty well. Um, I think if I had a weak ace or a suited ace, I'd probably three bet here. Um, get him to fold some hands that, that dominate me. Um, but queen 10 off suit, I think he's going to have some 9 tens, some uh, 10 eights, some queen 9, queen 8s in his rage. Um, obviously, he's going to have ace 10, king 10, ace queen, ace uh, queen jack, things like that as well. So we don't want to be too. Uh, want to be. A little bit cautious. He bets uh, hey, just over half pot, and we just give it up. And I think that's absolutely fine. Uh, I think that's sort of a professional decision in that we we're getting really really good odds pre flop. Um, really have anything on this flop? If we had the queen queen ten of diamonds, then maybe we can peel here um, with a backdoor flush and straight draws. Um, but I think it's uh, you know it's a good decision just to just to fold. Uh, this might be a really good spot to, to squeeze. 
We don't know anything about these two players. Um, but he's raised from early position. We've got a flat in between. Our squeeze here is going to look pretty uh, pretty strong. And if we raise to uh, to just, uh, let's say, about 3k, the, the squeeze end needs to work 50% of the time. We have an ace blocker to their hands that they're likely to forbet. Um, but at this stack size, I wonder how often, you know, they're going to need a pretty strong hand to forbet. So you're going to see a lot more flats and you get to play in position. Yeah, so, but the problem... The only concern with uh, squeezing here is if the original raiser calls, then the original flatter is probably going to call as well because he's getting really, really good odds. So I'd want to probably make a raise size that discourages any flats. Um, so rather than make it 3k, make it really cheap for them to call, and uh, probably go to like 4.5k here um, and, and get them to fold. But I guess I decided not to take that spot. And this comes again back down to the fact that we can just fold and, and find a, find a better spot and uh, just keep folding in these tournaments uh, rather than take a spot where we don't actually know anything about this player. Uh, so we're unsure of his range. Another thing to consider is that I've played a, a few of these uh, Zoom, Zoom and Rush tournaments now and players in late position love to flat with, uh, with really strong hands. So uh, something to be very careful about and wary of um, when you're deciding to squeeze as well. So when we don't know anything about the uh, players, I think it's just best to, to give it up and fold. Okay, so I just decided to let that one go. Ace-8 suited, I think I would open. Ace-10, I just decided to let it go from early position. Okay, um, I mean, 5 4 suit is fine to open here. I think a lot of players have already clicked onto the next table so that, you know, be pretty, uh, we're not going to have to play against loads of players and they're probably unlikely to know what my range is for raising here. Um, but we have a hand that um, can continue on, on a lot of flops and, and a flop pretty strongly and, and will be pretty well disguised as well. Flop a gut shot on a backdoor flush draw. This guy bets and we just fold. Um, I think... I think that's okay. I think uh, it's pretty tough for us to continue. Yes, I think we could call, but we've got a player back, a left to out behind us. Um, if we do hit the seven, we, you know, it's the, as it's called, the arse end or the bottom end of the straight, so it's not particularly good. Anyone with a nine then beats us. Um, yeah, we have a backdoor flush draw, but I don't think it's enough uh, to make the call here, so I just decided to let it go. Bit of a speculative open there with the 5-4 suited, but I think it's okay. Here we're just getting really good odds uh, to defend. We're getting 4.63 to 1, so I decided to defend. And he bets just over half pot. Um, and I just decided to fold again. I think, again, getting really good odds. We don't have to, to go against, you know, try and fight for this fight for this flop uh for this pot sorry um and there are probably better spots as well to check raise so you know if there's only one high color like this flop is 10 6 2 um i think we could then get think about a check raise because less likely to have him but with the 10 and the queen there like broadway hands have just completely smashed this so we uh just let it go So just folding, folding, folding. Uh, okay, uh, I really don't like this. I don't know why I chose to flat here with our stack size. So we have, what, 22 and a half big blinds, and we choose to flat this player. I think if, you, if you're going to do anything here, you can, make a th you can make it like 3K, because then he's just got to shove or fold. I mean, you could flat sometimes, but we have a hand that plays pretty well if he decides to flat. Um, you know, we can comfortably manipulate the size of the pot and, and put bets in when we when we feel confident. But here, I, I, I don't know what I'm doing, so uh, I don't think that's very good. Uh, obviously, we hit a very good flop, uh, and we're probably not going to be getting away from this. And we, check, we raise against the C, but very small C bet, and, uh, and we take it down. Um, this is just isn't going to happen enough of the time for us to flop as, as strongly as we did. So uh, I don't like the uh, the flat there. I think we can, uh, given the fact of what I said about we can fold our way to a, to a better hand, I think uh, that's really uh, speculative there. 
So pocket threes here, I decide to, to three bet. Our hand looks pretty, pretty strong. Um, we have about 30 big blinds. So I think he's uh, going to be in a situation, you know, he's not going to want to, to flat too often. Obviously now with the caller in a small blind, he's getting, getting really, really good odds. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and he does does call. Uh, I imagine I just need to give up on this spot. I mean, this just hits their, their calling ranges so often. I really don't like this bet. If this wins, then uh, I'd be very, very surprised. Yeah, we're in a whole world of trouble. Um, I think uh, I think the pre-flop three bet is is okay. Um, but the C bet is on the flop is just horrendous. So. Uh, you know, it just this is kind of bored, flush draws, straight draws, Broadway hands have just completely smashed this. So, um, it's an interesting that he decided to flat with Queen Nine. So, yeah, I wonder if if this guy with Ace King suited hasn't flatted, then whether or not this guy would have flatted as well. Because this is a kind of hand if he's going to be playing fit or fold, that our pocket three suddenly it's very easy to play because we can bet a lot of flops and he's just going to fold. Uh, but I guess then in that sense. We could do it with any two cards, and it's probably better to do it with some medium strength, you know, medium cards, like uh, nine seven suited, probably better because we can uh, we've got more options post flop. Uh, but yeah, I don't like the way uh, I played that. I think that's pretty bad. Okay, this is pretty pretty close to being um, a shove, I think. Um, but given that we don't know what this player's range is. Uh, it could be pretty pretty difficult, um, so I, I imagine that's why I chose to fold. But against a, a general cutoff opening range, I think we can shove a pretty uh, wide range here. What I'll do is I'll load this hand into ICMizer and go through the various spots you need to think about when you're three bet shoving, uh, and give you you know use this as a learning tool. Maybe eight eight off suit is going to be a fold, but at least we'll go through the process. Of working out three bet shoves, and we can uh, we can we can go from there. So one second. Right. So first of all, we need to we need to choose a range uh, for our cutoff. Now you can start if you wanted to um, by you can, looking at these uh, ranges within Equilab. Um, we just basically want a, want a starting point, and I've gone for a pretty tight range. I think whenever you try to work out these spots, it's good to go with a tight range, and you know, err on the side of caution rather than going, okay, yeah, well, this guy is definitely going to be raising this wide, okay, a very loose range. So we go for the tight range, and we can then actually copy this range into ICMizer. Uh, like so. Uh, so that's a pretty cool function using the two tools together. Uh, so this is his range that we think, okay. And I mean, we can we can try. This is uh, this is again. We don't know exactly what his range is that's going to call our shove, um, but we can make a make a good guess. So uh, yeah, this is the this concept I've talked about before about perfect and imperfect information. A, we don't know what he's raised. You know his ranges for raising uh, and B we don't know what his range is for calling but we have to make a, a guess and and go from there um, and I think in in the later stages of a tournament um, I think uh, you know if this spot was ever shown to be sort of marginal then I think I would probably take it uh, sorry not take it um, but uh, you know if I was confident this player was raising enough and then folding enough to our shoves then we can uh, we can Definitely a uh, three bet shove here. So let's say that he's, you know, this is his range for, for calling. So he's raising 19%. I'm calling with sixes plus ace 10 off suit, ace 9 suited. Oh, that's no good. Um, let me just come back. I've used the uh, the web based uh, browser today, so uh, I'll uh, just get the uh, proper software up and we will. Actually, one second, let me pause this. We're back, sorry about that. Um, I've got the software installed on my Mac, but this is the Windows version because I'm using Holden Manager. Uh, so we're on the Windows boot. Uh, I didn't have the software installed, but this is the web-based version and we are now logged in. So we should be able to calculate this spot. Okay, so we can see in this particular spot that ace 8 offsuit is a fold. Um, 
Now, again, we can click the hand EV chart, and this time you can see that the, the graph is the other way around. We need him to be um, folding, uh, sorry, uh, yeah, folding a lot of his range, so he's only calling with a very tight range. So if of his range, he's only calling with sixes plus ace and suit, ace jack off suit, then this is going to be fine to shove, just about. Okay, it's pretty marginal. If he's only calling with a really tight range, then again, it's much a much better spot. But anything else, you know, if he's calling wider than that, then it's going to be uh, negative EV, which is uh, which is not too good for us. Okay, so I think you can see here that against a ninety percent range, he's got to fold quite a lot of his range. Uh, he's got to fold over fifty percent for this shove to be profitable. We can, I mean, we can play around with this. Let's say Ace Ten off suit. How good are we doing then? Okay, so in this particular spot, that's much better. And this time, look, Ace Ten off suit. It's never going to be unprofitable to make a shove here with Ace Ten off suit. Um, let's say Ace Nine suited. Okay, is it going to ever? Okay, so again, it's not going to be unprofitable. Um, given. Uh, yeah, so it's never going to be unprofitable to shove in this particular spot. So that's really, uh, really quite interesting uh, to see that. Um, I love to see spots where whatever you do, you not get, you know, over the long run, it's not going to be wrong. Um, but again, looking at this, it says hand EV chart, expected value. So the expectation over the long run of how how you're going to get on, how profitable you're going to be. Um, so close to the final table where these decisions really matter, this is probably not a good spot to take. But when you are a long way from any any um, from anything meaningful, then this is a good spot. Uh, would be a good spot to take. Ace eight Then we found that was just a little bit too too loose. Um, based on the nineteen percent range. Now, obviously, if his range let me just show you if uh, if his range is much much wider. Uh, okay, I've actually got a preset here. That's cool. Um, can't read what that says. I think it's a standard button opening range. Uh, say he's raising from the button, which is a pretty wide range. He's just looking to steal, um, but he's then going to be calling. Let's say with this range, pocket fours plus ace nine off suit plus ace eight suited, king queen suited. We should see that we can actually yeah we can shove any two cards at that point. Uh, we had ace eight off suit. It was a pretty, uh, pretty good, uh, good shove in this particular spot. The reason why it's suggesting that we can shove any two cards in this spot is because he's only actually calling with just under a third of the hands that he's raising with. So these are the sorts of spots where you can, if you see someone that's just raising all the time, it comes to them in late position, then you need to be shoving a pretty wide range when you get down to this, this stack size. Um, you know, sometimes you are just going to run into into a decent, you know, decent hand, um, but you, you know, just got to suck suck that up and and move on. You know that this this play is going to work in the long run. Um, so you can see here again, a set off suit against his range. Doesn't matter what range. You know, we could flip our hand over, it and he wouldn't be able to make a profitable defend um, against us. Okay, so that's uh, that's a pretty nice uh, nice situation for us. Be interesting to see if we go to make a pretty weak hand. Okay, so if he is calling, you know, about half of his hands, then it's going to be unprofitable here. If we go to let's try seven six suited, and you can see again. So we. Yeah, there's a cutoff here. I mean, if he is going to be calling with some any a lot of his ace x hands and king x hands, then we uh, we probably um, probably don't want to be making making that shove. But it's a really good to really good tool this to just to try out scenarios. And I think I think when I first started reviewing spots, I would just put the hand into here and it would spit out an answer. And I go, okay, yeah, cool, I made the right play. Or oh no, I didn't make the right play. But now if you move forward, you can say, okay, well, what happens if I had this hand? What happens if this player is raising a different range and calling with a different range? And those that would just help you a lot more moving forward. Um, you know, if you just look at one particular spot, that's that spot is very unlikely to come up again. You know, similar spots will come up. Um, but if you look at all the different situations you can possibly think of, then it's going to be much, much better. Okay. Um, Let's move back forward. So I decided to let this one let this one go, not knowing about his hand. But ace queen off suit, I imagine. 
yeah, I just decided to get this one in. Again, we could do some analysis on Isomizia. I think this guy is probably going to be shoving an ace jack, ace ten suited. Therefore, you know, in game, I think this is pretty easy. Um, I said the thing as well is that um, if we shove, I think these two players not likely to to call too often. Um, I think the guy in the middle is less likely to call. He's going to have a pretty weak range. So I'm just worried about the guy, the original Razor. Um, but with ace-queen offsuit and 20 big blinds, I think it's uh, it's going to get it in. And we do... Um, somehow we've ended up ahead. And no one hits, and we take down a pretty uh, pretty nice pot. Um, so I, I guess this is, a, this is a really good example of... I could have put tried to put this guy's range into ICMizer, so his opening range in the hands that he decides to call with. Um, but honestly, I wouldn't have put down King Ten offsuit in his calling range in that particular spot. And this is the this is the the issue with using ICMizer, suit and go with it, anything like that. Is that I, my best guess was that he wasn't going to be calling with King Ten offsuit, and yet he did call with King Ten offsuit. So how will you ever know? Um, whether whether it's a it's a good spot or not, uh, so you know with strong hands obviously we're going to be going to be getting in. But again, it's that perfect and imperfect information. Um, I had no idea this guy would be call as loose as King Ten off suit, and then you know we you know that means that we could have shoved a little bit wider than 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 we did. Um, but we're never we're never really going to know that. So stick to you know stick to your kind of strong uh, shoving ranges when you put chips into the middle make sure that you've got a pretty strong hand and but after that i mean it's it's then up to the to the poker gods as it were um if he's going to be calling with uh, hands like king ten off suit so that gives us that's a pretty nice uh we've got 60 60 bigs now um so we're, we're flying pick up pocket kings always nice and we get called by the guy in the big blind pretty good flop for us um, decide just to bet half pot and he check raises us so he could be doing this with pocket fives pocket eights I think jacks would probably three bet pre so he's um, he could have jack eight and eight five jack eight suited eight five suited maybe uh, but his most likely hand here is like a flush draw or a straight draw so like ten nine uh, seven six so I don't think I want to stack off here I think I'm just going to call and let him barrel his bluffs, uh, which is exactly what I did. So the 7 comes off, uh, completes the 10-9 suited, and he bets again. So this is a, it's a pretty interesting spot. If he does have the strong hand that he, he's representing, uh, so strong hands would be the 9-10 suited and the sets. It's a pretty small part of his range. Um, he still has some flush draws in this range. He still has some some ace jack, king jack. It's very unlikely, but queen jack as well. Um, so I just decide to call again. It's a pretty good card for us. He bets again, and we have to make a decision. I can't remember what I chose to do in game, but let's just think this through. So, are there any missed draws? Well, I think seven six suited uh, wouldn't choose to bet this river. I think flush draws might bet this, and I think like an ace jack, queen jack uh, might choose to bet this. So we just need to work out now if there are enough hands in his range that we beat in order to make this call. So I think his most likely hands for betting here are like ace jack, pocket fives, pocket eights, um, and nine ten suited. Uh, so against that range, do we have enough equity to make this call? Um, so let's have a look. Okay, so let's put in these uh, this range. So we've got our hand king, uh, king of hearts, king of spades. This is his value range here, and we can see that uh, kings has enough equity to make this make this call here. Uh, we're not loving it uh, because we lose to his straights and his sets. Uh, I guess there's some two pairs in here as well. Um, let's put those in. Uh, how are we doing there? Okay, we don't lose too much. 
85 suited as well. Okay, we've still got enough equity to call, uh, just really based on the fact that he's going to have some, uh, there's quite a lot of combinations of ace jack offsuit, uh, nine combinations. Okay, so I imagine we made the call and he does have ace jack offsuit. So, lucky for us, um, not a particularly pleasant situation uh, when you're facing a raise there on, on this kind of board. Um, but there are were obviously some draws in there that he could have had. Um, if he'd shoved all in on the river, it would have been a pretty gross spot. Um, and we would have had to use do, do the same calculation. Um, do we think there are enough combinations of ace jack of, of suit in his range? I guess ace jack suit did as well. Um, that's, I mean, we didn't even put that in. Um, but I'm sure, yeah, that would have uh, would have affected things. Uh, you know, would have given us uh, even even better odds there. Okay, so moving forward then, ace three suited. We decide to open, and we decide to to flat this three bet. Um, we're getting we're getting pretty good odds, um, and we completely whiffed this flop. I think uh, I think I can just fold here. Um, there's no we've got no reason to believe that this guy is three betting light. We've got no, we've got no. Um, it's really difficult with an ace three suited hand to bluff raise flops because the ace blocks his ace king ace queen ace jack that he might fold on certain boards. Um, so like if this flop was seven ten five, and he has ace king ace queen ace jack, then we can get him to fold a lot of those. But we block that um, a certain part of of his range with our ace three suit. So I think here we can just fold pre flop and, and let it go. Um, Obviously, just trying to get a bit frisky and uh, and play a lot of pots, um, but there's absolutely absolutely no need to do that. Uh, raise with the fours and take that one down. King ten suited. I'm not going to be doing anything against the raise in the three bet. Fold here, fold, and we go to a lot more folding. See if it folds around. No, I'm going to fold. Ace king. We're probably going to play. Okay, so I decide to three bet this guy uh, in position and probably going to be calling a few shoves. Okay, so we get a caller from, you know, cold call from the big blind and the, this guy calls as well. But uh, facing this raise, uh, this bet, this donk bet here, we could definitely raise. I think calling here would be absolutely fine as well. Two overs and a, a gut shot. It's not a clean out. Um, any of those outs are not clean. That's the only concern with with calling. Um, but he's betting pretty small, uh, so I don't want to be folding. Um, but I do. Okay. Well, I do decide to to raise here. Um, most of the time, the bet like this is going to be a weak pair or a draw. Uh, so I want to charge him for that draw. The concern is that he could call here, or he could even shove his draw in now, and we won't be able to call. He does call, and lucky for us, we'd hit a clean out. Um, uh, here, I mean, the pot's bigger than his stack size now, so I don't want to make a small raise and allow him to get there with his spades, so I just ship it in and he folds. I think it's, I mean, it's pretty tough to say whether or not a smaller raise was going to get him to call. Um, I'm quite happy picking up a 32k pot at this stage, um, and if he does have a draw, sometimes he'll call it off, so... I'm happy, uh, happy there. So nice, uh, nice hand. I think the raise on the on the flop was okay to charge his draws, uh, and obviously when we hit, it's a pretty nice uh, situation. Uh, it's an interesting spot with the sevens. This guy's probably raised shoving three bet shoving a pretty wide range. Uh, sevens doesn't play particularly well against. This range. I mean, he could have some lower pocket pairs, but he could also have those suited Broadway hands um, that play pretty well against sevens. So um, sevens is an easy, easy fold. Again, you could do the top-down method here. Okay, what hands would you call here in terms of pocket pairs? We well, go with aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, probably maybe nines, and then ace, king, ace, queen. I think I'd probably limit stop at there. I don't think eights is good enough. I don't think ace jack is good enough. Um, given the fact we don't know nothing about this player, so sort of in a vacuum, what hands would you would you get in? Um, maybe you can go a little bit tighter than that. The fact that we are comfortable, we've got a comfortable stack at this stage, probably one of the chip leaders as well. So why do we want to 
tarnish that um, at this stage. Slides are flat here. Um, I think it's it's okay, um, but I think there's going to be probably be better spots if we just fold. Um, and here we just have to give up. So yeah, we're trying to hit a really a monster flop in that particular spot. Pocket threes, raise, and we get called. And it's not a good flop for us. It goes check check, and we decide to call here on the turn. I mean, he could be just betting a lot of hands um, because we've checked twice. Um, I guess we I mean, we do have the diamonds, but it's not a particularly great spot. Um, and on the river, unlikely to call a bet. Um, I mean, we have a bluff catcher, but it's not a very good one. Um, so I think we got pretty lucky there in that particular spot. Um, I think if he makes a big bet on the turn, I think we have to fold. Um, but he's getting given us pretty good odds. Um, not really though good odds to draw to anything, but just the fact that I just don't want to fold to such a small bet. So we move on. Ace two suited definitely going to be opening here. Um, pick up a gut shot. Not a good, uh, particularly good flop, but we can definitely bet it. He's going to miss this a lot of the time. Um, now our bet only needs to work 33% of the time, and he's going to have a hand that can continue. Enough of the time here. Decides to min raise, I think, and we just have to let this one go. Um, but that's absolutely fine. We know that knew that our raise, sorry, our C bet was profitable, um, and it didn't work out that time. Okay, so against this guy's shove, I would have definitely called with Ace Jack suited, but against this guy behind calling, then it's going to let it go, and we would have lost. So. But any, you know, we don't want to be uh, results oriented. We still would have called there against a five big blind shove. Get a shove. Uh, I'm going to fold. So good, good spot to just uh, talk quickly about range of hands that you would call with here. So he's shoving about fifteen big blinds. Um, so again, using the top-down method, aces, kings, queens, jacks, tens, ace, king, ace, queen, probably, and then leave it at that. I mean, the, the more healthy your stack size is at this stage, then the tighter you want to call because, you know, you could pick up a lot of pots by just open raising and putting pressure on other people. Uh, here, you can't put pressure on anyone. All you can do is, is call and have to win the hand at showdown. Um, so, you know, you could probably go a little bit tighter than that. You go Jackson and Ace King, and just because we have a pretty healthy, healthy stack. Uh, and again, we, we have no idea what this guy's range for shoving is. Um, shoving 15 big blinds, maybe we take out Aces, Kings, and Queens from his range. Um, maybe Ace King, so maybe he's just shoving Ace, uh, Ace 10, Ace Jack, Ace Queen, maybe. Um, but again, it's one of those situations really difficult to tell. Um, so it's best to err uh, on the side of a tight calling range until you've got a reason to believe that he's shoving a pretty wide range. So king queen suited. I think we'll make this the last hand that we go through today. Um, we get flattered by the small blind and the big blind. And pick up a pretty a decent flop for us. Open any straight draw, backdoor flush draw, um, and two overs. So definitely going to bet. We get called and we hit straight on the turn and sometimes it really is that easy. We bet again. Now he's, it's good to think what his range is here. So he could have the same hand as us. He could have like a 9-8 uh, sort of hand. He could have ace-jack, queen-jack, king-jack. Um, so all of those hands are going to call again here. And he decides to raise. So that makes me think he has a hand very similar to, well he has king-queen as well. Um, so I just decided to ship it in if he has like 10 8 of clubs uh, let's charge him for the for the draw and he does he does have king queen so not too much to talk about there um, we uh, we chop it up okay so this has been uh, this has been the next this next part of the double rush rebuy uh, talked about a lot of things today uh, about preserving your stack when you um, get a decent stack we've gone through um, Pretty tricky spot with the pocket kings facing the check raise on the flop. 
Um, I'm not sure you'd expect too many players to check raise top pair, top kicker in that particular spot. I guess we were raising from late position there and he wants to deny us the, um, the opportunity to, to realise equity on, on later streets. Um, but he did put us into a pretty pretty tough uh, tough spot. But again, we just need to work it through and say, okay, are there enough ace-jack hands in his range uh, to make a call profitable here with pocket pocket kings? And we did have the king of spades, so we think uh, it's unlikely he would have... Well, it's less likely um, he would have bluffed spades uh, because we blocked the uh, king x combos um, that that uh, in that particular spot. Um, so yeah, some um, I misplayed the uh, I think it was seven six suited as well when we had about twenty big blinds. So um, it's good to go through some spots where we're not doing particularly well, making a mistake, and then we went through some spots in ICMizer and I went through uh, ranges that we can three bet shove how wide players need to be opening to make profitable shoves in late position um, and i showed you you know that how to use icmizer to to work this through on your own in the future okay uh, so as always just a few plugs from me if you want to get in touch about private coaching then uh, email me gazellipoker at gmail.com if you want to follow me on twitter for all the updates about um how I'm getting on in the poker world, any webinars I've got going, then uh, follow me on Twitter at Gazelic Poker. And then you can add me on Skype as well, Gazelic Poker on there as well. And I can add you to our study group uh, that's ever expanding, ever growing, which is great. Um, so yeah, just uh, just get in touch in any of those uh, any of those ways. Be good to uh, good to speak to you. All right, so this has been Gazelic for grinderschool.com. Uh, signing off. Till next time, guys. Take it easy. Bye bye.